Hi. Today we're going to talk about the natural domain of a function. Okay. With a real valued function, with real val with real valued functions, I should say, defined by an equation where x is the independent variable, the domain refers to those values of x that are legal to plug in, so to speak. In other words, this is just a way we can describe it. What's legal? Can you put that x in there? Can you put negative 3 in your function? Does it work OK? That's the question we're going to ask here about with the natural domain. We're going to go over here and take a look at a couple easy examples. For example, function of x equals 1 over x. You can put a lot of values in there. You can put negative 50, 25, 9.72. But you can't put 0 in here for x. You can't replace x with 0, because if you do, you'll have division by 0, and the function will be undefined. Also, let's take a look at g of x equals the square root of x. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, you'll get an imaginary number. You won't get a real answer. It's the kind of thing that your calculator will kick back to you, error or something. So we, that's the way those go. And if I look at this first one, f of x equals 1 over x, I say, I put it in interval notation, domain, d colon, is between negative infinity and 0, or 0 and infinity, not including 0 on either one of these intervals. See, and that's the way we write it. It's a little bit complicated. You think, why not write it as x is greater than doesn't equal 0? Why can't you write it like this? But this is a more precise way to write the domain. Over here, the square root of x, this is not a very good 0. Let's correct that. The domain goes from 0, including 0, square bracket, all the way to infinity. Of course, none of the infinities have square brackets because they're not real numbers. You never put it. We don't include infinity. Uh, these are pretty simple. It's pretty easy to see what's going on here. But the basic principle is the same, even in more complicated ones. Let's go over to this one here. And I've got h of x equals the square root of 4 minus x over 3x plus 2. And I see that I've got two problems. One, I'm, I'm, there may be a, ver uh, a value of x I can put in here, which will make this 0, an illegal, in other words, x that I can't put in there. And I have whatever I put in here for x, when I make this computation, the, the result has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I have an even root here, and I've got a possibility of 0 in the denominator here. So I have to be careful. And not only that, just because an x value works in the top doesn't mean that it will work in the bottom, and vice versa. So I'm breaking it down. I'm not calling it numerator and denominator. I'm calling it top and bottom here, just for simplicity's sake. And I've got an x number line. And I'm going to examine the domain of just the top as a separate function. When I do that, let's see what I get. Well, I know whatever this quantity is, this 4 minus x it must be greater than or equal to 0. It could equal 0 because we know the square root of 0 is 0. But this must be greater than or equal to 0, or 4 must be greater than or equal to x. So x has to be less than or equal to 4. All right? Well, here's 4. It can equal 4. But, and it can equal any number going this way, all the way to negative infinity. But it can equal 5, for instance. If I put 5 in there, I get into trouble. If I put 5 in there, I get 4 minus 5, I'll get negative 1 under the radical. Notice I can put in negative numbers like negative 20, because 4 minus a negative 20 makes a positive 20, and I'll have 24, which is a positive number. So it's the end result that you look at. When is this, this expression greater than or equal to 0? Now on the bottom, this 3x plus 2 can't equal 0. So I'll, I'll go over here and I'll analyze this, this function alone. 3x plus 2 cannot equal 0. That means that x cannot equal negative 2 thirds. Because if it, if it is two, negative 2 thirds, this whole expression will be 0. And I'll have 0 in the denominator. And you're not allowed to have division by 0. Those are the two things we have here that we say are illegal at this stage of the game. We can't put a negative number under an even root, and we can't have 0 in the denominator. So now let's see what this does for us. Well, here's negative 2 thirds, isn't it? Can't equal negative 2 thirds. I'm going to put an open hole there. But if it can equal any number in this direction, 
or it can equal any number in this direction. Now, remember, in order for a point to be in the domain, something like maybe negative 5, it has to be in the domain of the top and the domain of the bottom. In other words, it had, we're, going to look, we're going to be looking at the intersection of these two sets. For instance, negative 5 is in the domain of h of x because it's in the domain of the top and it's in the domain of the bottom. All right. So what we need to do is look at all the points for which the, uh, the, that work on the top and all the points that work on the bottom at the same time. In other words, the intersection of the top and the bottom has two sets. And I can see this, all these points going this way and all these points going this way work in both are in the intersection of these two sets, but this one is not, okay? So it appears that it's, it'll work in the top, but it won't work in the bottom, so it doesn't work in the function, see what I mean? So we can write our domain just like this. Our domain is going to be negative infinity all the way to negative two-thirds, but not including two-thirds, or two-thirds all the way till what? Well, they have all common points going, going. Negative okay, two until thirds. I hit negative, until I hit four. Pardon? Negative two thirds? Is it negative, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, negative two thirds. I forgot negative two thirds. I got a student out here who's helping me out. So we don't have those sloppy little mistakes. Yeah, we're going up negative infinity to two thirds, not including two thirds, and then from two thirds all the way, I could go forever on this one, but I gotta stop here. So I can only go to four. The four here, but I can include four because it's in the domain of the top and the bottom. So this is the domain of h of x. 